Fawcett, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today we're going to be tying a, uh, it's just a little mayfly imitation. Um, it's a, kind of in a cruncher style. Uh, let's see, where are we? So a little bit like that. Like that one right there. I don't know if you can see that. You know what, I'll switch over to the big camera so you can see it a little bit better. That's what we'll be tying. It's a little mayfly pattern. It can be used as a damselfly as well. Really simple little pattern to tie. Um, the hardest part is just making sure that you leave enough room for the for the front end there, so the hackle doesn't get crowding crowding your head. So um, today in the vise we have a uh, um, Hens BL three hundred in a size ten. Um, this is a standard wire. Um, if you want to go with something a little heavier, something that's going to maybe sit down in that in the surface film a bit, um, you maybe want to go with like a 354. Um, you can see here, I'll show you the difference in wire size. This is a one, uh, extra heavy. So you can see the wire size is it's quite a bit bigger. So that'll give you a little bit more weight. Um, I don't like having a lot of weight on these, but uh, that's just uh, my, my preference. Um, so I'm going to be using some uh, strung neck hackle. I'll show you up there some strung neck hackle and a dark olive um, for the tail and for the uh, wing if you want to call it that and um, you can if you want to make this into a wet fly style you can use something like right like a like a pheasant dyed green pheasant or, or anything like that so then it'll be a wet more of a wet fly style um, but today we're going to be doing it the other way we're going to be using some Arizona semi Arizona semi seal uh, in all of in peacock sorry um, for the little dubbing ball in behind. Um, I'll be using some olive wire in small for the rib and then some Zemperfly Nano Silk in size 12. Alrighty, so let's get going. So always gotta wax your tying thread first here. Um, I know there's a, a few people out there. Lindsay Simpson from the UK is another one that does it, uh, is one that that does it a lot and they actually put a dab or two of uh, super glue right onto the nail onto the nail onto the hook just before they uh before they tie on the thread but uh i find that uh, the wax is plenty good enough so so we're just going to build up just make sure that the the hook shank is covered i'm going to stop about there now i'm going to take I've got one feather selected already for my front hackle. This one here is a longer, kind of a messier one. I'm just gonna take some from the back end here for the tail. I don't want too many fibers here. Um, just gonna take about 10, eight, 10 fibers. You're gonna end up when you're, when you're rolling these, cause you wanna roll these in your hand just to get them lined up. You're gonna probably end up, there's a few longer ones there. I'll just yank those out. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. There you go. Just gonna yank these longer ones out. Um, sometimes it pays just to have a little tweezers, but so I wanted about the length of the body, and then my body is gonna end about there. It's gonna end about uh, two eyes back. It's my body, so that's about where I want it, right about there. So I'm just gonna take a loose wrap, and then I'll tie back to my tie-in to where I want it to stop. I'm gonna lift the tail up and I'm gonna go under it and over it. That'll help lift that up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna tie this material back just in open-ish wraps. It doesn't have to be totally open to about where I'm gonna stop with my body. I'm gonna tie this down and that just gives me a target point. So about there is where I'm gonna stop. So now I can take that and I can just take my Good scissors here and just give that stuff a nip off. It just gives me a, a, a target. I mean, it's not that uh, that you don't know where the target is, but it's just it just a visual thing while you're tying that you don't have to worry about thinking. So that's about as far as I'll go up with any of my materials. So, so yeah, so uh, yeah, just tie in your your wire there on this on my side. You want you want to just tie it in at your your stop point there. Just let that sit to the back there. Now I'm gonna take some holographic tinsel in large. I'm just gonna cut off a piece of that. 
I had a piece of that cut off, but it ended up on the floor. So let's cut another piece for now. It's going to lay that on my side again. Catch that in. And then I'm going to take both of these and just tie that all the way back to where my tail is. I have to lift that every once in a while just to make sure you're not going too far. There we go. So now I'll bring this back up. And I'm just going to do a half hitch. Oh, I'm going to lubricate my, uh, my bodkin. Bobbin, sorry. Uh, so one. Just going to wrap it right here. All the way up. Overlapping wraps. You want a nice, as tight and clean of a body as you can. It's not going to always be perfect. And it's not a huge deal if it's not. So there. So I'm going to stop. Just shorten this thread just a little bit here and it's going to cross over I got it caught one more one more and then I'll do two or three in front give my vice a bit of a turn just nip that place material off I'm going to counter wrap my rib now you can use a medium here if you want, if you want to show that segmentation a bit more. Um, I use the small here for a couple of reasons. One, um, it's lighter. I don't want to add any as much uh, any weight to this pattern if I can help it. Um, so that's one. Um, two, I don't really want that segmentation too, too much here. So now that I've got that fastened, I'm just going to do my helicopter. Off she is. Come back just a le little bit there, about there. I'm just going to give my thread a bit of a wax because I'm going to be dubbing now. So take a bit of the Arizona semi seal. Just, and the, you don't need a lot here. You just want to create a little bit of a ball for two reasons. One, you, when you pull it out, it gives you a, a little bit of a legs, if you want to call it that. But uh, more than anything, it creates a bit of a ball, so it helps flare out that uh, hackle you're going to be putting in. So that is maximum. That's about all you want there. Come back in front, right up against it. Now you could pull out a little bit here now if you wanted to. I usually do it once I've got the hackle tied in, like once I've got it all the way wrapped. So now I'm going to tie this in by the tip. I'm just going to spread my, my materials there. So I'm going to create a bit of a tie-in point. I'll cut myself my little lick always when you're tying it. A little bit of a tie-in spot there. Now this material is a bit on the old side here. So I've already broken one off on the last one I tied. Um, try to get yourself, if you can, try to get fresh material. Um, it doesn't have a tendency of breaking as easy. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So. So now I'm just going to stroke all this back, give it a turn, stroke it all back, give it a turn. I want about, about four or five turns, it depends on the, the feather you selected. Let's see, maybe one more, see how that looks. Yeah, one more, one more. And I'm going to tie that off. Fold it back, tie in that stem, get that stem nicely tied in, create just a little bit of a head here. <clears throat> now, if you hold your material, your, your thread tight, you can just take this and just give it a, a pull off. Uh, but make sure you hold your thread tight because if you don't, just go watch my dabbler video and you'll see what happens. It comes off. So just a small head here, whip finish. Make sure it's nice and tight. So there's pretty well the finished fly. Now I'm just gonna take my, my dubbing brush and just give it a bit of a, just a couple of pulls, that's all I want. I don't want very much of that pulling out, just a little bit. That's it. So now I'll take my little head cement here. Whether you use head cement, crazy glue, whatever, that's totally your choice. Um, because I'm blind in one eye, I don't like using the brushable stuff with 
with the uh, small heads like this because I end up making a mess. With the bigger heads I use it and bodies I use it. But So that's it. That's the fly right there. Um, I love fishing this one on a, on a floating line. Uh, they work really well in the rivers. They work really well in the, in the lakes. Um, like I said, I just like float, uh, right on the top, right on the surface or just just below letting that thing sink just into that into that surface tension uh, into that surface film um, and then just a real slow retrieve back like a figure eight like a chronomid um, and then every once in a while give it a bit of a tug tug and let it sit and then start your figure eight back over again um, i tie these in several different um styles it's i tie them in in the silver body i tie them in a red body i tie them with a gold body um, but this is the one that seems to, I'm just look, trying to see if I could find, I had a red one here somewhere, but um, uh, this is the one that seems to be the one that, that I've had the most success on. So uh, yeah, give that one a shot. And uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Uh, give that one a thumbs up and smash that notification bell. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next tying video. Tight lines, everyone.